There's going to be uh, various political stances arise in relation to all of this stuff. Uh, for instance, one faction will say that nothing at all is wrong. Uh, this is, I think, what we see going on now, that there's a kind of collusion by governments and institutions to manage apocalyptic awareness and to say, well, you don't need to worry about the fact that uh, ozone is disappearing from the atmosphere because uh, by 2000, we will have a 7% reduction <laughs> in output of CFCs. And uh, by 2050, we're planning a further 7%. Uh, and, and you say, no, no, these are crazy people, obviously. Uh, the, uh, you know, there's a lot of arranging the deck chairs on the Titanic going on. Um, and and uh, uh, but I think eventually that fluctuations, as the fluctuations become more violent, they will burst through and, uh, poli and political dialogues will start on various fronts. It's hard to say where it will come. For instance, you know, historians of the, of the breakup of the Soviet Union can reasonably argue that what actually the hole in the dike there was the Chernobyl explosion. And that actually set off a series of, of thought, of awareness. People's minds changed. It was like a psychedelic drug, this radiation spreading through Soviet society, because they realized, my God, you know, this was a power plant. It was at ground level. It wasn't even a designed explosion. And eight days after it happened, above Auckland, New Zealand, you could sample the, the radiation in the air. So there was a whole crisis of faith in the command economy, in, in uh, everything. And this could happen, some, the, this will happen. The one thing you can be sure of is that the 90s will be shaped by the unexpected. Uh, could be anything. A hot day in August in Mexico City and a million people die when finally all of these toxic levels come together as they potentially could. Or it could be a nuclear failure. Or it could be an assassination. Or uh, it could be the outbreak of a synthetic disease. Or I anything. You know, and what this will bring home to people is that the metastable nature of society is beginning to break down, that the shock waves of the future are building up. And what you, you know, in, in engineering an airfoil, uh, engineers have to take account of what is called Q forces, vibration. If you don't design the airfoil correctly, as you approach the speed of sound, the wings of the airplane will be torn off. And so you have to redesign the airplane to move through this barrier. What we have to do is redesign the cultural airfoil so that we slip, what? What, you mean that it shouldn't support wrecking the third world? Pardon? No, see, I think that that kind of thing is, is like talking about closing air bases near Sacramento and whether Western civilization can survive the shock of these, this uh, loss of, of jobs. Uh, we're, we're turning into an information society. and. Managers are trying to meet the crisis, but if my faith rested with human managers, I'd be frantic. Uh, the main thing is that the design process is being imposed by nature itself, just in the way that a supersonic aircraft has its design imposed by nature itself. The nature of the medium is dictating uh, the shape of the society that is coming into being. Ma the main thing is to uh, 
try to make this through with as little bloodshed and hysteria as possible. It's very hard call. I mean, looking at something like Bosnia, you know, the impulse to use F-18s to correct the problem is very great. And yet, you know, in the past, this has not brought joy and thanksgiving uh, where it was used. And also the hubris of thinking that you, you're, you know, your job is to separate these people. On the other hand, we can't have people running around trading nuclear weapons in the red light district of Frankfurt, and uh, which is going on, this is actually going on, uh, there is a great potential for chaos on the Eurasian landmass right now. How should that be managed? And, you know, a lot of people have nuclear weapons who have no business having nuclear weapons. I think we need to disarm from the top. That's a political agenda and what one thing that has to be understood is that what is going on is a process of fragmentation and that is what is supposed to happen at this cultural stage I think McLuhan talked about what he called electronic feudalism wherever fragmentation is resisted violence and war and horror will break out for instance, you know, five years ago there was great anticipation of a federal Europe. That ran against the current of dissolution. And now we see there won't be any federal Europe. I mean, there'll be something on paper in Brussels to keep the diplomats shuttling back and forth. And there'll be no unified psychology. Uh, they're going tribal. The great political force shaping the 90s on one level is ethnicity and turf battles. As these huge ideologies withdraw their imperium, uh, all these local satrapies and warlords begin to exercise their historical claims. Uh, Islam is set to make enormous gains. This has to be accepted in the West. It shouldn't be resisted. The historical momentum is too great. And, you know, it's 700 million people and it represents the only reservoir of tradition of significance left on the planet. Um, in terms of a political agenda, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear. The psychedelic thing speaks to freedom. And so you can shine that on a number of issues. Uh, women's rights, abortion, legalization of drugs, uh, but, but, I don't, but not absolute libertarian uh, anarchy, because I don't think we want to get rid of the Food and Drug Administration. Uh, we may want to execute the top echelon and replace it, but the concept of... You know, I, I mean, I've lived in a country without a f pure drug act, and it's a nightmare. In India, you can't buy pepper without being afraid that it's been contaminated with lead flakes to make it way more when you buy it in the market. <laughs>